in technology. Next is the approval of the agenda, and we have an addition, correct, Mandy? Correct. There is a request to add a agenda item from the Attorney's Office for Cybersecurity Assessment and Consulting Services. All right. So we'll slide that in right before the County Attorney update. Okay. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the approval of the consent agenda. The agenda. Oh, yeah. sorry. I move and approval the agenda as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next on our agenda is the consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Next on our agenda is public appearances. Do we have a public appearance today? Yes. Yep. Good morning. Yeah. Right up to the table in the microphone. So please state your name. We generally limit our public appearances to three minutes per person. Yeah, my hearing's not the best, you know. Well, I own a, and operate sawmill campgrounds down by North Lakes. Sir, I think I'm, we're just going to ask you to state your name. Oh, yeah, Dennis Michaels is my name. If you want to use this, Dennis, then you can help it help with the hearing, too. I'm going to use this thing. Huh. You just, this is the volume. And this goes on here or something. Yep. Though, huh? Test. Can you hear us now, Dennis? Yeah, better. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, just I own uh, uh, <clears throat> I own and operate sawmill campgrounds down in North Mankato. Uh, about a year ago, I, I stopped over to planning and zoning to apply for to large bag campgrounds by eight sites. And in my age, that's all I care to do. Um, uh, but, at, but while I was there, I was advised, well, how many sites could I do? Well, I, uh, on the five acres I have there, I could do up to uh, you know, uh, the 24 more sites. So, uh, so I was advised, why not just apply for 24 more sites? Well, you, you know, that sounded good to me, but I don't, even, uh, I don't care to do eight, but... Uh, but if they're going to do 24 more, fine, you know. Uh, uh, so, so that was, was, so that was what I did. And uh, but it kind of got me in trouble down the road later uh, because at uh, the time it got passed down through the system, I was I was going to build 24 more sites. Well, I never planned on building 24, uh, you know, more sites. I just planned on building my eight because I want to put water and sewer and power. Uh, over on the east side of the campgrounds, and and then the eight sites are just kind of fit in uh, 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 to one row, and, and and that's all I care to do today is just eight more sites, uh, uh, and 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 then whoever buys me out, or my son, daughter, or grandchild take over, fine, they can expand it, um, uh, uh, just but not me anymore. Um, uh, so everything went through fine and, until it got down to Greenwood. And then he wanted, uh, 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 this time he got the information, I was going to build 24 more sites. Well, I never was going to, but, but it got turned into that. And, and then he said, I need a, uh, a right-hand turn lane and, and all that stuff. And, and, and it'd be, uh, yeah, 48 more cars. Uh, you know, uh, just in and out, uh, just if everybody went uh, just once a day. Uh, um, and and I told him I don't want to, uh, just eight more sites. Well, he kind of told me in uh, different bl uh, bluntly terms that he was not going to count it down. It was 24 sites or, you know, or nothing. Uh, well, I said, all, all I want is eight uh, two more sites, which will uh, in and out uh, one car, they be 16 more sites, uh, 16 more cars. Well, that's not going to affect the traffic 
uh, this to speak of, because they all don't come and go at the same time. And uh, so I kind of so so I called a state guy and an account as of oh four or five years ago was 1,900 cars a day. And whatever that means, a threshold. Of, uh, the road is only 1,500. Well, uh, S and H, uh, no, yeah, S, S E H, engineering, told me last week that count of roads is down to 1,400 uh, because five gallon gas kind of slowed everybody down. You know, people just don't drive like they used to. And I can see that at the golf course too, where the golf course uh, used to be kind of full of cars. Now it's uh, part of life, probably half full of cars. Uh, so, so, so the count of traffic went way down, and and when I sit on my front porch, I can see that too. It is way down, and and then at nighttime when I uh, uh, just when anybody leaves on the golf course toward dark, they all kind of leave at the same time, and it's way down. It just uh, it's just way down, and so so I don't think. Uh, eight more sites if everybody drove in and out uh, every day and if I'd be full uh, that would uh, only add 16 cars and like I said they all don't come and go at the same time and I don't think six, well, 16 cars more wouldn't even bring it up to uh, the threshold hardly. Uh, so all I really want is the permission to put my eight sites in and get things ready for the next uh, uh, just owner uh, uh, whether it be my relatives or not, or or else would, uh, it would have more saleable, uh, pro, uh, uh, did money wise. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, Mr. Michael, thank you for being here. You're asking the county board for consideration to approve your request, but doesn't this need to be a planning commission idea before it moves to the county board? I ask. A general question. I would assume so. You understand, Mr. Michaels, that a request like this would have to go to the Planning Commission of Nicola County. You're making us aware of your position today, yeah. but you, have you been advised about that? No. You're being advised now. Where's the county board at, or who are they going to see? I'm sorry? Uh, just who did I go see about it? Uh, Madam Chair, if I might. Yeah. I kind of thought this was a county board. <laughs> it is. There, Mr. Michael, there, there are people in the room who can help explain the process, and it'll probably be better to talk with them. Mandy, you probably can direct Mr. Michaels, and Mr. Greenwood is here as well. We're encouraging you to have a discussion with them about the process to get to the point you're trying to get to. We, we can't do anything about we're, we're interested in hearing from you, but they're the folks who can help direct you. Okay. Uh, Raise your hands, please. <laughs> uh, 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 well, you know, when, after the meeting? Or? I'll walk over with you. Now? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. All right, next on our agenda is Public Works. Seth, you are the guy of the day. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board and staff. Several items from Public Works today. Uh, the first being to consider final payment for project SP52612-008. Uh, um, this project was the County Road 12 grade raise and reconstruction project. Uh, the project is complete and ready uh, for the board to authorize final payment. The final payment amount would be 60000 $33.62, which would make the final contract value $5,557,862 um, in 12 cents. Um, so we're getting f finally very close to, to completely being done with the County Road 12 project. 
even once final payment is complete to the contractor, there's still some final steps that my office has to, to work through. Um, once final payment is made and we have those final um, values for all our different uh, funding expenditures, we're able then to request those final payments from um, the Federal Highway um, and MnDOT State Aid for the retainage that they, they hold on those um, final funds. Now, there is one particular hiccup with our Federal Highway disaster projects, so it affects County Road 12, it, it, it's affecting County Road um, 14 um, Hill project, and it's going to affect the County Road 21 um, slope project that we're currently working on developing plans and, and specs for is for the Federal Highway disaster funds that we receive, there is a 20% match required. And that 20% match is sp supposed to come from uh, these funds called Chapter 12 funds that are pr provided by the state legislature for um, helping to fund um, disaster projects in the state of Minnesota. Those funds flow through uh, the Department of Public Safety, and when you read the law, the Federal Highway Disaster Program should be an eligible um, um, those projects funded through Federal Highway Disaster Projects should be eligible for some of these Chapter 12 funds. Um, what, depart what Department of Public um, Safety is telling MnDOT is no, we are not eligible for those funds. And so there is a spot going between MnDOT and Department of, of Public Safety on getting access to those funds. Um, we have enlisted the help of AMC. Um, there's other counties involved with this because there's other disaster projects throughout the state. And so a letter was generated by the County Engineers Association and AMC and sent to the governor's office to try to get help from the governor to settle this. What this means for Nicollet County, these Chapter 12 funds, um, for the expenses that we've incurred already and the additional expenses and match that we will need for County Road 12, we're talking about almost $1.6 million that should be coming to Nicollet County from these Chapter 12 funds. And so we're continuing to work through that process and try to get resolution to this, but if the process gets stuck, I may be enlisting your guys' help to reach out to our local legislature and the and the governor to get some resolution on this because Nicollet County can't walk away from $1.6 million in Chapter 12 funding that very much appears that we should be eligible for. So that's just a little nuance with, with these federal disaster projects and something we're going to continue to work through. But for this agenda item, I'm looking for, um, for the county board to accept this project as complete and authorize this final payment to Mathewitz Construction. Thank you. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second question. Discussion? Commissioner Kohlers? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for that explanation. Out of the $5.5 million that it took to reconstruct this highway and bring us out of the water, what is the, do you have a total of what the Nicola County exposure was to this? Um, you're, so you're asking the different funding sources right. that we use. So. Um, Sarah, would you give me? I gave Sarah my detailed uh, final payment information. I can, I can get you exact numbers. Just to refresh my memory, I can't remember anymore. It's taken so many years to get this thing done. Actually, I think it moved pretty fast considering the project. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, to go from you know not having any design or any plans or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, we move this about as fast as humanly possible, especially when you tie in all the requirements that the federal government hoists on us also okay. to make yeah. something like I, this. I guess I was referring to the people that live there. They considering it's a wetland. I mean, you don't move too quick <laughs> through wetlands. <laughs> so we used about two point six million dollars of our. Um, county state aid regular construction funds and a lot of those funds were expended on the area outside the area that that flooded we tied on some additional grading work since we we're gonna have the road shut down um, we expanded our project some for that um, 
I received about uh, a little over 600,000 in state aid disaster funds to help with the grade raise um, area. We received a little over 1.6 million in federal highway disaster um, dollars, and that was solely attributed to the flood area. Um, the Chapter 12 funds that we're wrestling over and trying to get access to, we should receive um, about 360,000 for this project from that funding source if we can get access to those funds. And then I was also able to secure a state park um, road account grant to put towards the overall um, reconstruction of that 2.3 miles because this road serves two <coughs> wildlife management areas um, <coughs> along County kind of Road 12. And so we're eligible for money from those accounts. So um, I would say we did very well in getting outside funding to fund the bulk of, of this project. I appreciate that recap and I want to on behalf of the board thank you for the efforts that you put into this to find those other funds to make this possible. I appreciate your work. You're welcome. It's been it's been quite the project. She's a pretty <laughs> smooth trek mm -hmm. from yeah. the 2112 intersection east through yeah. the lakes yeah. to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. it, it is a nice project. It looks really nice. Thank you. And hopefully it'll never go underwater again. Well, if it, <laughs> if it does, we're in big well, trouble. We're in trouble, aren't we? Because that road is supposed, we, we believe we have it built at the shoulder edge. It should be two, two and a half feet higher than where the water would naturally run out of that basin. So in theory, it should never flood. And if it does, big troubles. Build an arc. We yep. might have an arc. Right? Yep. Well, it would take a significant rainfall for that to happen. Yes. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next one. Second item is to consider final payment for project SP5261321. This was for the con uh, CASA 13 concrete overlay project that we completed from Trunk Highway 99 down to 506th Street. Uh, Kroll Incorporated uh, did that project for us last year. This was also a federal, uh, partially federally funded project, but these weren't federal disaster funds for this project. These are what I would say are normal federal funds that we get access to on a periodic basis. Uh, for Nicola County, we may see um, federal funds of this sort um, probably every five to, to seven years. And so there was about $1.7 million of federal highway funds that went into this project. There was also um, about $172,000 of, uh, like MnDOT called them CRISA funds. And so those CRISA funds were from the first COVID bills that the federal government um, passed. And so there was a certain allotment that came to uh, Minnesota through MnDOT and MnDOT developed a formula in every county and state aid city received an allotment of some of those federal COVID dollars and so when those came down County Road 13 was already through the federal process it met all the requirements to expend federal funds on and so I applied that 170 some thousand of those CRISA funds to this project, just which would just decrease the amount of our state aid regular funds that we had to invest uh, in this project. And so looking for the board to accept this project as complete and authorize final payment to Kroll. The final payment amount is $49,137.27. The final overall contract value was $4,913,726.84. And this was a state concrete paving award winner project on top of it. Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval on what might be one of the nicest roadways in Nicollet County. It's pretty cool. S second and a quick question. Yep. Could you tell, what does it take to win a concrete award? What is it about 13? I don't know. It takes uh, good design and planning. It takes then an excellent contractor to do excellent work, and Kroll did an amazing, an amazing job. So, what, would, what would we notice? How would what, what what's the award-winning features? Would we be able to notice something as a 
user? It's smooth. Okay. It's, it's extremely smooth. And so as part of these paving contracts, be it if it's a bituminous blacktop paving mm -hmm. contract or a concrete paving type project, there are incentives built into the specifications. So if you pave a road extremely smooth and there's different gradations to that scale, um, the contractor can win additional monies for oh. paving it so smooth because smooth pavement um, equals longer le longevity and so if okay. you're mm -hmm. if your tires going down the road or rolling smooth and they're not pounding your pavement will hold up longer okay. if it's not smooth and your tires are chattering that's a constant pounding on that pavement which you can start getting premature cracking Oh. And, and whatnot. So that's why they pay a, a incentive for, for smoothness. We also, on concrete paving, pay incentives for quality of the concrete mix and the quality of the, um, the aggregate, the rocks that they use mm -hmm. in the mix. And Kroll maximized the incentives on, on mm -hmm. all of this. So those, those mix type incentives, the general public and yourselves aren't going to know mm -hmm. by just driving down the road. but using high quality aggregates, paving that concrete with a very low water cement ratio, ratio all equals longer longevity, which will pay us, you know, in the long run, so. Fantastic. Yeah. And as part of the submission, um, f uh, we have to submit all that data as part of um, the award process, mm -hmm. and they look at that, and, and that's part of some of the criteria that they look at. To follow up on Commissioner Morrow's uh, question, so what is the life expectancy of a road like County Road 13 and the concrete? Is it 30, 40, 50 years? Well, the design methodology we use is based for, for a concrete thickness and overlay like we did on 13 is 30 years. I fully expect we'll get quite a few more years than just 30 years out of that payment. But the design methodology is set for, for a 30 year lifespan. If we were doing a thinner concrete overlay than what we did out there, uh, you may be looking at a design methodology of a 20-year lifespan, but when you look at the data of the concrete paving that's being done on the county system throughout the state, um, the counties are getting a lot more years of life out of those pav pavements than what, you know, the initial just design methodology um, good to know. showed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Olmsted and County they were one of the first counties in the state to do true concrete overlays. And I believe that first pavement might have went 30 to 40 years before they even did any appreciable major maintenance on that highway. So, yeah, we're seeing good performance out there on these. She's a smooth ride. Yes. It's very nice. It's, it's oh kind of fun in certain cars. <laughs> 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 anyway, any additional questions for Seth on this final payment? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next item is to consider MnDOT Turnback Agreement 1048520, and there's a corresponding resolution. Uh, the resolution just authorizes um, the board chair and the administrator to sign um, the agreement. And so this turnback agreement revolves around uh, the MnDOT Trunk Highway 14 expansion project that's going on from New Ulm to Nicollet. And so as part of that project, MnDOT is constructing some new alignments of County Road 12, 24, and 37. And so when the project is all said and done and MnDOT accepts the project as complete, um, there's certain segments of those three county road routes that will need to be turned back to the full jurisdiction of the county, and that's what this agreement um, does. And so if you look, there's a copy of the agreement in your packet, and if you go towards the back, there are um, maps that show those exact turn back areas of County Road 37, 12, and 24, and those are highlighted in red. Mm -hmm. Now you may ask yourselves, why doesn't the red extend maybe through completely through the um, interchanges? Well, in those areas, there's shared responsibilities between the county and the state, and the state retains the jurisdictional control over their ramps and loops and the bridges, but there are shared maintenance components where the county will be 
plowing snow and doing crack filling and stuff um, through the interchange area. The interchange areas and those maintenance responsibilities, they've already been laid out and <laughs> agreed to in an agreement that the county board has already approved earlier, and that was the cooperative construction agreement um, that we approved some time ago. And that's where we authorize the payment to the state for our cost share um, for these three um, segments and in the corresponding interchanges <coughs> that were built as part of that. So I'm more than happy to answer any questions about these agreements, but I'm looking for the board today to approve the, the turn back agreement and the corresponding resolution. So moved. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any questions for Seth? I mean, Madam Chair, it's been my good fortune to be involved with transportation for a good number of years. And the one thing that I could observe is the partnership between county, Nicola County, and the state of Minnesota during at least these last 10 years has been terrific. And if there are issues that come up, both sides look at them and they try to, and they resolve them, I think we can say with good faith. So. Yeah. 37 is the township road on the far west end that comes down onto 14? Uh, 37 comes out of New Ulm. Okay. And then it'll connect the township road. Um, the That's township road now connected to 14 further to the north, north or northwest yeah. of, of where 37 comes in now with the okay. interchange being built. That township road um, from the north is being realigned to come into the interchange and into that northerly roundabout. And that interchange has a overpass or does that one just have the roundabouts no that has an overpass yeah um, 37 will go over highway yep. 14 in, yep. in this area Kay. and at, at 12 and 24 highway 14 will go over um, 12 and 24 at that location yep. that was part of your plan when you folks were yeah meeting yeah on that, right? yeah yep is that like the savage thing a little bit uh, or is that different it's more like the nicklet thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that nick. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's more like nicklet. At least the 37 one is, is a lot like the nicklet. Okay. Yeah, it'll be similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, topography dictated just how those highway, who went over who. <laughs> in those yeah, and there instances. wasn't room for arc cuts. Well, there was room for arc cuts in there, but felt it was not the safest option. Not for the traffic volumes that yeah. we were seeing at the county road, the yeah. major county road intersection. Okay, any additional questions? Uh, being that it is a resolution, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Morrow? Yes. Commissioner Kohler? Yes. Commissioner Drano? Yes, thank you. Resolution. Madam Chair, before we go to the next yeah. one, okay, just a general 14 update, how are things going? Um, I think they're going well. I haven't talked directly to the DOT um, here real recently, but I know that things are fully underway and uh, a lot of work going on in the city of Cortland. Um, mm -hmm. They're trying to get the intersection of Old 14 or County Road 24 upgraded and done and open back to, to local traffic. So that's one area that they're, they're really concentrating on. And I'm assuming that they're probably working on um, geotechnical type work, uh, bringing in the, the approach fills for the bridge abutments and whatnot because there's poor soils in several mm -hmm. locations where they're gonna have to surcharge it and let that uh, material settle out before they can continue their, their building. But um, it's on my list to schedule a, uh, a visit with, with MnDOT. They offered any time I wanna go out and mm -hmm. kind of take a tour of the project, uh, they're more than willing to do that. I just haven't had the time to take them up on that. You know, if we feel comfortable enough, Madam Chair, for a road tour this fall, if we, mm -hmm. If we decide to do that, maybe there could be a, a pit stop someplace to get a better view, right, Terry? Yes, sir. I would I mean, think so. I mean, for three million dollars, we should have some free tickets for a, for a <laughs> visit. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. All right. Next one, MnDOT Master Agreements. Yes. So next, I am considered MnDOT Master Partnership Contract, and there's also a corresponding resolution. Uh, there is a copy of the contract and resolution in your packet. 
Um, there is a current adopted MnDOT master partnership agreement between MnDOT and the county, but it's set to expire on June 30th of this mm -hmm. year. Um, they typically have, um, they typically update and redo these partnership contracts probably every four to five years, and they do that because there's typically, you know, state law changes and whatnot that uh, needs to be updated in these agreements. And so what this agreement really allows um, us and the county to do is to be able to request and purchase various services from each other um, through work order contracts. Now some of the work that we can partner on mm -hmm. is um, uh, very basic and would not require a work order contract and we utilize this on a very routine basis. And so as we do our, our projects, of course, we're doing material testing. We're taking concrete samples, aggregate samples, bituminous samples, all that kind of stuff. We take that. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have the testing equipment um, to do some of those tests, so we take those materials to the MnDOT lab, and they do that <coughs> testing for us. And so that ability to do that is handled through this uh, master partnership contract. And so this, this agreement is, is very helpful. Um, to us. Um, there is potential if the county wanted MnDOT to do some actual design work for a county project, this master partnership agreement allows that type of um, activity occur, but since that would probably be a much higher mm -hmm. um, value type of service and not just a typical basic type of uh, um, work um, deal, you would execute a, a uh, a work order contract laying out those terms and whatnot for that. That doesn't happen very often. Um, but again, that's what this master partnership contract would um, allow us to do. So I'm more than happy to answer any further questions on this. This is probably the fourth time that the county board, that this type of um, master, master partnership contract become before the board since I've been here as county engineer. So it's kind of a routine update to this agreement. Madam, Madam Chair, if you're looking for a motion, I'll move to approve. I would have a question. Right. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Is there a second? Second. You two are busy today. Your question, Mr. Yes, Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we always look to our very talented county attorney to make sure that contracts like this have been reviewed. I don't see anything, you know, with my vast knowledge of attorney work uh, in there that would change, uh, in my opinion, about it. But maybe you have some review that uh, you've had a chance to look at, or maybe not. I have not been asked to review this contract, so I didn't look at it closely. But if it's been, if it's something that's routinely renewed, then generally I don't review them be because they don't change. Very good. I, I thought that's what we might hear. So thank you. In my uh, reading last night, the city of St. Peter approved the same. Yeah, resolution. every every state aid city yeah. and um, and county, this agreement. If you want to yeah. have these type of partnerships with MnDOT, every one of these entities across was, the state is approving the exact same. Literally agreement. word for word. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, hearing uh, no further questions, Sarah, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Colars. Yes. Commissioner Morrow? Yes. Commissioner Drano? Yes, thank you. The resolution passes. All right, on to our uh, agenda item from the county attorney's office. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you have before you um, a request to authorize um, me to sign and enter into an agreement with uh, Clifton Larson Allen for cybersecurity assessment and consulting services. Uh, in part, um, this is a uh, part of our obligations under the statute to do these assessments and this is a step toward that along with looking some uh, um, other procedural um, matters within the county. So I'd ask for authorization to enter into that <coughs> agreement. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Questions or comments? <coughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 County attorney updates. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to uh, let the board know that I continue to attend a substance use advocacy group meeting. Um, that is a group that was formed um, with the city of Mankato um, to begin discussion about what we can do regionally, um, perhaps to focus the opioid settlement dollars um, to best use those uh, dollars in a regional or area manner rather than each individual entity um, focusing individually rather than um, as a region. Um, so I think we're going to be meeting either every other month or quarterly um, to look at that. We've already done some really good work of putting out public service announcements about the availability of services in our community um, to address uh, substance use issues to ensure that families are aware of what's out there to help them um, either as an individual or a family with needs that they might have for substance use issues. Um, and hopefully the opioid settlement monies will start flowing to uh, counties and cities. Um, I believe in the next month or two, the first portion of that settlement will be coming forth. There's another settlement that's coming forth. And so once we start getting more specifics about what dollars are and what timing is, we'll be able to make more country, concrete plans uh, for those funds. Thank you. Thank you. I see the governor signed his portion or signed off on the state's program yesterday and it's not uh, we a did get an update at AMC last week too uh, at our Association of Minnesota counties meeting so huh. that second tranche of money will be less than this first one correct yeah correct all right uh, chair's report um, since our last board meeting the region 9 revolving loan fund has met a couple times we're punching out money from cares dollars before it has to go back Region 9 Board of Directors meeting, extension meeting in Nicollet, fun things coming up. Uh, most of the District 7 AMC meeting before I got called away. Uh, one water, one plan. We're down to a plan now. It's huh. up for review up in Gaylord. And last night's uh, Board of Adjustment and Appeals. Commissioner Committee reports. Commissioner Morrow. Uh, Commissioner Kohlers and I, we did a special election caucus. Uh, let's see, uh, the uh, CHB board, executive board meeting, community corrections. Uh, I think uh, maybe a few of us did the uh, AMC opioid settlement discussion. We all attended AMC. Uh, and then the, uh, I always, it's a huge acronym, but it's SHAC. It's public health, state public health meeting. And then uh, last night's meeting. Thank you. Commissioner Kolars? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, so uh, Commissioner Moore and I canvassed at the vote on May 25th. We had our um, quarterly Maple meeting, the AMC district meeting. I had uh, three meetings with our area transportation planners in the last month. And last night's Board of Equalization, I just wanted to thank Commissioner Morrow, Commissioner uh, Drantel, and uh, Commissioner Copet for their work and our assessor staff mm -hmm. for their fine, fine work in uh, hearing people and hearing the appeals that came before us. Um, really appreciate the efforts of all involved. Thank you again. Thank you. And our county attorney was also here to provide uh, legal backup. Thank you. Next on our agenda is commissioner meetings and conferences. Um, next week we have township association, I believe. That would be the only one where we're all in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, approve uh, per diems and expenses. So moved. Second. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn the regular board meeting. So moved. moved. So okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I will now call the drainage authority to order. First on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the agenda is the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any public appearances regarding ditches? Seeing none, motion to adjourn the drainage authority. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye.